Okay, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgeway. I'm the author of On This Day in Tudor History, which is the inspiration for these daily talks where I bring you something like a marriage, a coronation, a death, an execution, a birth, a battle, events that happened during the reigns of, well, favourite kings and queens. Now today I'm going to take you back to 1565 for On This Day in Tudor History, Sunday the 29th of July 1565. 23-year-old Mary, Queen of Scots, married her second husband, 19-year-old Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley. Now, Mary, Queen of Scots, was Queen Regnant of Scotland, Queen Regnant being um, a queen who rules in her own right rather than a queen consort who's the wife of a king. And Mary was the daughter of King James V of Scotland and Mary or Marie of Guise. Her paternal grandparents were King James IV and Margaret Tudor, Margaret Tudor being Henry VIII's sister and King Henry VII's eldest daughter. So there's the link to the Tudors for you. Mary had become Queen of Scotland on the death of her father when she was just six days old, so incredibly young when she became Queen. The bridegroom, Lord Darnley, was the son of Matthew Stuart. Oh, we've got the bells ringing out for Darnley. Uh, Matthew Stuart being the fourth Earl of Lennox. And he was also the son of Margaret Douglas, who was daughter of Margaret Tudor. So we've got the bells for their wedding ringing out, I think. Um, so, of course, you're thinking, Margaret Tudor is in both their families? Yes, Mary and Darnley were related. They were half cousins, and that wasn't at all unusual at the time. So the bells are still ringing out for them. I'm so glad that uh, most of you do enjoy the bells because they're going off all the time. Now, the bans for the marriage had been read in St. Giles's Cathedral, High Kirk of Edinburgh, on Sunday the 22nd of July, and that afternoon Darnley had been made Duke of Albany. On Saturday the 28th of July, heralds proclaimed the forthcoming marriage of Mary and Darnley at the Market Cross in Edinburgh and proclaimed that Darnley would be made king following the wedding. At 6am on Sunday the 29th of July, the couple were married in Mary's private chapel at Holyrood Palace, or the Palace of Holyrood House as its official title is, in Edinburgh. The bride, who had been married before uh, to Francis II of France and had been widowed following his death in 1560, wore her doy blanc, her white mourning attire, to the wedding. She was led to the altar by the earls of Lennox and Athol. The couple made their vows and Darnley placed three rings on Mary's right hand. After prayers, Darnley left, leaving Mary to celebrate the nuptial mass, of course the Catholic mass, <coughs> without him. A historian John Guy, whose book on Mary um, I would highly recommend, writes that Darnley wished to avoid the charge of idolatry and that's why he didn't stay for the mass, the Catholic mass. At midday on Monday the 30th of July, heralds proclaimed that Darnley was King of Scotland, with the couple's official title being declared, Henry and Marie, King and Queen of Scotland. Now, this marriage, sadly, was not to be uh, very happy. Well, it was, it was happy at first, uh, but it didn't remain happy for very long. In March 1566, Darnley, with a group of men, um, a gang of his friends, murdered Mary's private secretary, David Rizzio, in front of a heavily pregnant Mary. Darnley was apparently jealous of Mary's close relationship with her secretary. Mary went on to give birth to Darnley's son, the future King James VI of Scotland, King James I of England, on the 19th of June 50, 1566. But Darnley's behaviour became increasingly erratic. 
And he also expressed a desire to be awarded the crown matrimonial, the right to co-reign with Mary rather than uh, being her king consort. And this had led to him becoming increasingly unpopular and becoming a bit of a problem for Mary and the Scottish lords. In February 1567, um, this problem of Darnley was solved when Darnley was killed at Kirkfield. There was an explosion at the house where he was staying, but he wasn't actually killed in the explosion. He'd been murdered prior to the explosion, and perhaps the explosion had been an effort to cover up this crime. It is thought that James Hepburn, Lord Bothwell, supplied the gunpowder for this explosion, but he was acquitted of murder in April 1567. On the 24th of April 1567, Mary was kidnapped by Bothwell. Now, it's unclear whether this was actually planned by Mary and Bothwell um, or whether it was an actual kidnap. And he then allegedly raped Mary and she became pregnant with twins by him. They were married on the 15th of May 1567. Now, I'll give you links to my other uh, talks on Mary Darnley and Bothwell because I've done quite a few on this day in Tudor history talks on them. So you'll be able to find out more about some of the events that I've mentioned here in those talks. But a book recommendation for you, the very best book that there is, in my opinion, on Mary Queen of Scots is My Heart Is My Own, The Life of Mary Queen of Scots by John Guy. So I'd highly recommend you getting hold of a copy of that if you want a detailed biography of this fascinating woman. By the way, today is also the anniversary of the Battle of Gravelines in 1588. The Spanish Armada uh, was defeated by England at that battle, so it's a, a key victory, a key date uh, for us, so we need to remember that as well. Spain lost at least five ships in this battle and had several others severely damaged. Spain also lost a lot of men, 2,000 men compared to uh, 50 that were lost on the English side. So uh, victory for England over the Spanish Armada. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe to this uh, channel by uh, clicking round about there. Uh, you can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live as well. Um, and of course, you can give me a like, give this video a like. Uh, things like that just help others uh, to find my videos and to uh, join in our sort of Tudor uh, nuttery? Is that even a word? Have I just made that up? Uh, our Tudor obsession. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow with another Tudor history event. Take care. Bye-bye.